Hello everyone, this is Yu Jetian, the first author of the accepted paper, an empirical study on model pruning and quantization. Uh, first, I would like to introduce the authors. My name is Yu Jetian. I'm now enrolled as a PhD student in Macquarie University, and my current major research area is model acceleration. I used to be a master of research student in Macquarie University, and this paper represents my research output during my master period. Uh, Dr. Hao Luan is with the School of Cyber Engineering at Shidian University as a professor. Dr. James is my PhD supervisor. He was also my supervisor during my Master of Research period. And he is now a senior lecturer or equivalent to assistant professor in the US. And he is the deputy director of software engineering in School of Computing at Macquarie University in Sydney, Australia. Um, first, I'd like to introduce a little bit of background. So as the role of Internet of Things and edge computing becomes more and more important, the amount of deployed IT, IoT device or Internet of Things device and edge devices keeps growing. These devices are designed for a long period usage even under unattended environments. And thus, the long battery life became, it becomes the first priority of design as opposed to the computing abilities. However, on the other hand, these devices, they will produce real-time data and it's unrealistic to process these tremendous amount of data acquired by these devices over cloud as the data transmission would require stable internet connection and also efficient bandwidth. And it will consume a considerable amount of power. And this is against the real-time processing, power efficiency, and network tolerance requirements of the IoT devices. Uh, for instance, fatigue detection during driving needs to like respond in real time for life saving, and unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs require power efficiency to conduct long-term tasks without power recharge, and the human activities detection would require long-term wearing without interrupt the user's daily life. And also like offshore oil platforms, which comes from the industrial IoT or IIoT. Uh, these kind of platforms usually contain considerable IoT devices, but the device's connection to internet is quite limited. And the industrial conduction, in the industrial control systems require real-time response for monitoring and security uh, applications. However, conversely, as the main focus of current research is targeted on increasing the model accuracy, modern deep neural networks usually contain dozens to hundreds of layers, like for example, MobileNet or Vision Transformer, the VIT. The, co the corresponding model parameters have also like proportionally increased which leads to a large model size. Though these kind of models could perform well with high accuracy, they require a substantial computing resources to deploy. Like not only the IoT devices, modern edge devices like microcontroller units, the MCUs, and mo mobile phones, our daily usage, uh, they are also limited by their battery capacity and computing resources. Here in the table, it shows a comparison of commonly used model sizes against mainstream edge devices memory capacity. Uh, for instance, we can see in the table that the size of commonly used pre-chained model VGG19 is about 550 megabytes, while the onboard random access memory for a Raspberry Pi Pico is only like 264k uh, kilobytes. And thus this kind of accuracy but sizable models needs to be compressed before they can be deployed on the IoT devices or edge devices. In recent research proposed several approaches to perform model uh, compression. For example, the parameter pruning and quantization, low rank factorization and the knowledge distillation. Uh, Han et al. proposed a deep compression which applied quantization, Huffman encoding on the LANet, the AlexNet, 
and also the VGG16 networks, uh, they achieved a max compression rate at 35 times. Or, in other, in other words, it's 2.88% of the original size for AlexNet and 49 times. Or, in other words, 2.04% of the original size for VGG16 without impacting the model accuracy. And Denton et al. noted that with the convolutional neural network, nearly 90% of the computing time they are spent on like the count layers, while the first several layers are the most time-consuming ones. And by using the low rank appro approximation, which may decompose the original parameter matrix with singular value decomposition or the SVD. The required space for matrices storage could be significantly decreased. And moreover, the decomposed matrices could be clustered, and the method reaches a final compression rate at 3.9 times. And moreover, Barr and Karana proposed the knowledge distillation, which trained a shallow network to mimic a deeper network without sacrificing accuracy. And this method was based on one of the author's previous work, which trained a small network to approximate a full network on pseudo-data. However, these methods, they are limited on, for example, particular networks such as LANET or AlexNet, and as well as limited datasets like MNIST or even some kind of pseudo data made by hand. Uh, meanwhile, with the advancement of neural network theory and design, modern networks they contain more and more complex architectures and layers uh, so, so that it could extract features from large datasets and apply these kind of compression methods directly to these complex modern networks might lead to very poor performance. We don't know. And so that it's necessary to investigate the compatibilities as the current research lacks the exploration of the applicability of these compression methods on modern models and datasets. And thus we like introduce our three research questions. First is that how the weight-based pruning affects the model's performance. And research question two is how the various compression rates affect the model's performance if we're training the model that we have like pruned. And third is that how the various quantization storage bits affect uh, the model's performance. For the research question one, for the RQ1, uh, we first train the full networks from plane and then apply the weight-based pruning on the backbone networks with different pruning rates, um, minus 10%, minus 50%, and minus 19%. And in other words, the corresponding compression rate are 1.1 times, 2 times, and 10 times, respectively. And for RQ2, we train the various pruned networks with the same training settings as the full ones. And for the RQ3, we quantize the non-zero weights with different storage bit settings, uh, which has been set as a hyperparameter or the qubit. The value range of qubit is from 2 to 4, and the corresponding centroid numbers for different qubits are 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 3, and 2 to the power of 4, respectively. And data sets and networks we choose are like Fashion MNIST, Cypher 10 and UCI HAR, uh, and also there is ResNet 18, AlexNet, and VGG 11 and 19 with batch normalization, respectively. Our research target is like to explore the compression effectiveness on specific models so that we choose to augment the training datasets to help mitigate the overfitting. And in our experiments, the image datasets, Fashion, MNIST, and Cypher 10, they are both augmented with steps adopted from He, Kaimi He's practice, uh, 
we've like rev, uh, cited the paper uh, and like both augmented are uh, adopted from Hua's practice uh, as our implementation of networks requires constant input shape. Uh, we first reshape the image to the required size, then randomly crop them, and finally followed by random horizontal flip and with 0.5 or 50% as the possibility. And it is worth noting that the random crop is padding enabled to maintain the required size. And the pruning method we apply to the chosen models is adopted from Han et al. Uh, we train the chosen models from scratch, uh, prune them models, prune these kind of models with different thresholds and evaluate the consequence of different uh, compression rates. Uh, after the pruning, the weight matrices um, could still be compressed through quantization, and we choose to perform weight sharing as a method of quantization, which will cluster weight values and use the value of centroids as the representative value for the weights in the same clustering. Um, though there are several clustering centroid initialization methods, for example, random clustering, uh, density-based clustering, and linear clustering, it has been prove that initializing the centroids with linear clustering method could somehow mitigate poor representation caused by the singular value. Uh, however, the limit of the linear centroids lacks the discovery. Thus, we investigate the boundary of the linear centroid method in terms of compression ratio and accuracy. And we also investigate the k-means plus plus, a modern non-linear clustering centroid initialization along with the linear cl clustering centroid initialization and we conduct some compar uh, comparison. And after the experiment, uh, we've got some results and we would like to answer to our own RQ1 and RQ2. For the research question one, comparing with the full models, the performance of compressed ones degrade by 2.33% on fashion MNIST datasets, 4.25% on Cypher 10, and 41.57% on UCI HAR on average with the two times models, while the 10 times models with 73, more than 73% on the fashion MNIST, more than 60% on Cypher 10, and more than 40% on UCI HAR. Um, the 1 to 1 times models shows no significant difference, like, which is like reasonable. And this phenomenon also shows that the pure pruning could still keep the model's performance up to two times, but models for temporal domain datasets, like for example UCI HAR, uh, for these kind of datasets, uh, the pruning is kind of destroying, kind of destroying the models, kind of, so the models for these kind of datasets are kind of very vulnerable. vulnerable. And for RQ2, from the three depots, we could see that after retraining the prune networks, performance of all compressed networks shows no noticeable or, tolerance, or tolerable degradation, a degradation um, with the average degradation smaller than 0.7% on spatial domain uh, datasets and 4.9% on temporal domain datasets. This also reflects that retraining is very essential for high compression rates and applying the retraining step could could help to keep the overall accuracy no matter on time time based uh, no matter on spatial domain spatial based or temporal domain uh, datasets uh, retraining could always help always help to keep the overall accuracy. And it is worth noting that though pruning will lead to model performance degradation, different pruning rates will also lead to some well lead to some op opposite performance. Uh, on the spatial domain datasets, the, the fashion MNIST and the Cypher 10, uh, VGG19 with batch normalization is the biggest network among the four chosen networks. 
This network shows the least degradation for two times compression, while the largest degradation occurs for the timed 10 times compression. Uh, in contrast, ResNet 18 is the smallest network. It shows the largest degradation for two times compression, while the least degradation for 10 times compression. We believe that for like large networks with considerable feature extraction layers, uh, stability could maintain when pruning, but when certain portions of the weights are removed, uh, the performance will drastically drop. And meanwhile, for the residual networks, the feature extraction layers are shallow, but the structure makes them more uh, uh, re uh, re restrainable when a large number of weights are pruned, for example, 90% of the weights being pruned, been cut off, it can still maintain, somehow maintain the accuracy. In other words, large deep networks are insensitive but vulnerable to pruning. Meanwhile, residual networks are sensitive but kind of robust for pruning. Uh, so it's like a, we need to choose the balance between them. And on the temporal domain data sets, uh, for example, the one we choose, UCI HAR, Comparing with the full models, the performance of compressed ones degrade by 41.57% on UCI HAR on average with just two times models. And on the average is, on the 10 times models average is 67.29%. Though AlexNet shows the least degradation among all choose networks, these all four networks show obvious degradation starting from two times compression. Uh, we believe that models trained for temporal domain datasets are more fragile and susceptible to pruning. And for the RQ3, from the shown table, we could learn the performance degradation for four quantization bits, or the qubit equals to four is not noticeable. Yeah, which means we have two to the power of four, which is 16 different values uh, for clustering. However, for the qubit equals to two, all the uh, evaluated neural network show a fatal performance degradation, which indicates that using four unique numbers as clustering centralized to two to the power of four, set it to Q, set the qubit to four. Um, it can help to maintain. However, if we set the qubit equals to two, which means using two unique numbers, uh, four unique numbers as clustering centroids, it cannot maintain a usable status for model quantization. Uh, meanwhile, for the RQ3, it is worth noting that for deep networks like ResNet 18 and VGG19 with batch normalization, the performance of quantization correlates to the pruning rate. The higher the pruning rate, the higher the quantization performance. We believe the reason is that small value weights will become the noise for clustering and degrade the performance walls. And the increasing pruning rate somehow can help to reduce the noise and help mitigate performance degradation. Uh, on the contrary, for shallow networks like AlexNet and VGG11 with batch normalization, the performance of quantization is related not only to the pruning rate, but also to the qubit value. When the qubit is lower than four, the quantization performance is in inverse proportion to the uh, pruning rate. When the qubit equals four, it shows a similar characteristic as deep networks. Uh, we believe the reason is that shallow networks contain fewer layers and the distinctiveness, distinctiveness of parameters is the key to maintaining the performance. And applying quantization with fewer clustering centroids will destroy the distinctiveness and degrade the performance. While the deep networks contain enough layers, which is more robust for the distinctiveness loss after the quantization. And it's also worth noting that ResNet 18 performs the best among four networks. Uh, as the ResNet 18 contains the residual block or the rest block, uh, this might be the key part for maintaining the accuracy. So for our future work, based on the well performance of graph network graph neural networks on the non-Euclidean distance datasets, we plan on further explore the compatible compression methods towards the GNN. 
uh, it's worth noting that in recent years, other methods for deploying neural networks on IoT device appear um, from both compression aspect, for example, noise distillation, low rank approximation, and transfer learning, and also from the execution aspect, for example, model splitting. These new approaches provide us a, a new horizon of researching. And meanwhile, as transformer networks also contain residual blocks as ResNet 18, it is possible to apply model compression on transformer networks with a high pruning rate, for example, 10 times, and the qubit equals to 4, so that we could reach a high compression rate while maintaining the performance. And we also plan on further explore this kind of methods, uh, the boundary for this kind of methods as well. And that's it. Thank you for your time. Uh, highly appreciate that. Uh, do we still have any questions?